Hey guys, welcome back to Quick Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick us to the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 2 to the power 40 plus 2 to the power 40 plus 2 to the power 40 plus 2 to the power 40. And I actually have four answer choices for this problem. So for A, I have 2 to the power of 160. For B, I have 8 to the power of 40. For C, I have 2 to the power of 42. And for D, I have 2 to the power of 21. All right, let's go through all these answer choices. So for A, how they got 2 to the power of 160 was you keep the base the same, and then you simply add all the exponents. So you do 2 to the power of 40 plus 40 plus 40 plus 40. And 40 plus 40 is 80. 80 plus 40 is 120. 120 plus 40 is 160. So you have 2 to the power of 160. And this method is actually wrong because that's not the right way to add exponents. Now let's try out B. B is 8 to the power 40. How you get this is you, you keep the exponent the same and you simply add the basis. So you do 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 to the power of 40. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. So you have 8 to the power of 40. And this method is also wrong because that is not the right way to add exponents. You can't simply add the bases all together. Now for C, what you do is you first start by factoring out 2 to the power of 40. So now you have 2 to the power of 40 times 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 because 2 to the power of 40 divided by 2 to the power of 40 is 1. Now by simplifying with parentheses, 2 to the power of 40 times 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. <laughs> so I have 2 to the power of 40 times 4. Now 4, this is the same thing as 2 squared. So now I have 2 to the power of 40 times 2 squared. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 2 to the power of 40 times 2 to the power of 2 is going to equal 2 to the power of 40 plus 2. And 40 plus 2 is 42, so I have 2 to the power of 42. And this is actually the right way of adding these four terms. So this C is my answer. All right, so I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out 3 to the power of x from my left-hand side. So now I have 3 to the power of x times, now 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of x is 1, so I have 3 to the power of x times 1 plus 1 plus 1. Now this is equal to 1. Now 1 plus 1 plus 1, this is going to be 3. So now I have 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. And now from here, I actually have two methods to solving this problem. So for method 1, 3 here, this is the same thing as 3 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m times a to the power of n, this is equal to 1. Or sorry, this is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 1, that's going to be 3 to the power of x plus 1. Now this is equal to 1. Now 1 here, this is the same thing as 3 to the power of 0, because anything with the power of 0 is equal to 1. So now I have 3 to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power of 0. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, then this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x plus 1 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1 on both sides, so these two cancel out. And I'm left with x is equal to negative 1. So this is my answer. Now for method 2, 
So I have 3 to the power of x times 3 is equal to 1. Now I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. So now I have 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 over 3. And now if I have something in the form 1 over a to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of negative n. So in this case, I have 1 over 3 to the power of 1. And this is the same thing as 3 to the power of negative 1. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So in this case, x is equal to negative 1. Now to check, I have 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x plus 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. And we know that x is equal to negative 1, so now I have 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 plus 3 to the power of negative 1 is equal to 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of negative n, this is equal to 1 over a to the power of n. So 3 to the power of negative 1 is going to be equal to 1 over 3 to the power of 1. 3 to the power of 1 is the same thing as 3, so I have 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1. Now, 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is 2 over 3, so I have 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is equal to 1, and 2 over 3 plus 1 over 3 is 3 over 3. Anything divided by self is 1, so 3 divided by 3 is 1, so I have 1 equals 1, and this is right. All right, so I have 7 to the power of x minus 7 minus 7 to the power of y minus 7 is equal to 2400. Now, first off, if I have something in the form a to the power of m minus n, this is equal to a to the power of m over a to the power of n. So 7 to the power of x minus 7, that's going to equal 7 to the power of x over 7 to the power of 7. And 7 to the power of y minus 7, that's going to equal 7 to the power of y over 7 to the power of 7. And this is equal to 2400. Now, if I multiply both sides by, well, first off, actually, before that, 7 to the power of x over 7 to the power of 7 minus 7 to the power of y over 7 minus 7. This can be written as 7 to the power of x minus 7 to the power of y over 7 to the power of 7. Because both the denominators are the same, you can simply just subtract the numerators with each other. So now this is equal to 2400. Now, I can go ahead and multiply both sides by 7 to the power of 7. So now from my left-hand side, these two are actually going to cancel out. So now I'll be left with 7 to the power of x minus 7 to the power of y is equal to 7 to the power of 7 times 2400. Now, as you can see, 7 to the power of 7 times 2400, this is going to be a positive number, right? Meaning, if 7 to the power of x minus 7 to the power of y is going to result in a positive number, then this must mean that 7 to the power of x is greater than 7 to the power of y. And this means that because both of these two terms have the same basis, this means that x is greater than y. So now we can say that x is going to equal y plus k. And k is any integer. So now if x is equal to y plus k, we can rewrite x as, we can rewrite this as 7 to the power of y plus k minus 7 to the power of y is equal to 7 to the power of 7 times 2400. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So 7 to the power of y plus k, that's going to be equal to 7 to the power of y times 7 to the power of k. Now I have minus 7 to the power of y is equal to 7 to the power of 7 times 2400. Now, if I factor out 7 to the power of y from this, I have 7 to the power of y times 7 to the power of k minus 1. This is equal to 7 to the power of 7 times 2400.
Now this gives me two equations. I have seven to the power of y equals seven to the power of seven, and seven to the power of k minus one is equal to 2400. This is because, as you can see, this is in the form an, a term times a term, and this is the same thing, a term times another term. So that's why I made, we made these two terms equal to each other, and we made these two terms equal to each other. So now, if 7 to the power of y equals 7 to the power of 7, then this means that y is equal to 7. Because if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So y is equal to 7. And now, I have 7 to the power of k minus 1 equals 2400. You can first start by adding 1 on both sides. So now I have 7 to the power of k is equal to 2401. And this means that because 2401 is the same thing as 7 to the power of 4, this means that k is equal to 4. So now we have both our values of k and y. And remember how x is equal to k plus y. So we know that y is 7 and k is 4, meaning x is equal to 11. So y is 7 and x is 11.